Good evening, everybody. Uh, this is uh, Pastor Jeff Brown at New Life Church in uh, Northwest Indiana, specifically Hammond right now. We're in uh, our home uh, that, we're, that we are at at the moment. So we're going to be in Romans chapter 5. And uh, as I stated, I, as many chances as I get to be able to to teach or to preach y'all to y'all or just to share it with y'all. I'm gonna go through the book of Romans till I can you know say that it's done, at least for my part. Not done studying no matter how much you study in the Bible. There's always something new each time that you uh, that you look at God's word, amen. Amen. So um uh, We're in Romans chapter 5. We're going to start at verse 6. Um, we, last week we talked about faith triumphs trouble. And, and uh, <laughs> there's a lot of trouble going on. And faith does triumph. And uh, uh, just uh, as, faith, as faith triumphs over trouble, it should also apply to other things in our lives too, as well, like a bad attitude, and uh, uh, you know things like that. So uh, goes from bad attitude to other things and things like that. I try to have a good attitude, but um, just you know, at times it's very, very difficult. So uh, that's why Christ took our place instead of me dying on a cross, because I probably would have not been able to handle it the way Christ did. I want to be able to handle things the way Christ does, but I'm not fully God. I am fully human and fully fallen human, just like the rest of us are on this earth that are. Uh, and when you talk about Romans chapter 5, the whole book of Romans again, we talk about it's a salvation book. Uh, the whole Bible is, but Romans specifically um, is really strong about Christ being uh, taking our place. There's things that's been happening in our lives that we wish that Christ took our places now. You know, you know how would Christ handle it compared to us? I'm much better than I can sometimes. Um, but he says in verse six, for when we were still without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. He died for me. Um, I was ungodly. Sometimes, even as a Christian, I, I try not to, but I act ungodly. And then I have to ask for forgiveness, and I have to remember that Christ lives in me, the hope of glory. Um, I have to remember that. It's Some days are real easy to do. You know, things are good. Everything's going my way, as that song says. Uh, I think that came from... Uh, a kid's movie a long time ago and bird bear or wherever saying how everything goes his way because it's a sunshiny day well not every day is sunshiny is it not every day is filled with low humidity and sunshine and and you know flowers and things sometimes the day is filled with rain and thunderstorms and things break down and tear up and you know and and people get hurt and people, you know, have problems. That's why my I don't have I don't have the strength. This is when we see for when we were still without strength. That it should imply that we never had it till Christ came along, amen. Amen. We have we think we had the physical strength, but you know what? The physical strength is something that sometimes that's not what you have to worry about. It's the spiritual, it's the emotional strength that we have to have. This is in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. That means it's not going to happen very often if it happens at all. I mean, you hear of soldiers covering a hand grenade to save their platoon. Or somebody gets in front of a bullet out in the streets of Chicago or Gary to save their children. So one lady just just this week, just this week in Chicago, had four kids in her car. 
and the gang members shot at her and the kids and she drove far enough away to get away from the, the shooters and she's in the hospital in very critical condition as of this morning. I don't know what it's like this evening, but she was in very critical condition. She's, she's had it rough. Um, you know, we have things rough in our own lives too. And I got, unfortunately I shared it with my, with my congregation and they understand. Do you, do you understand, I hope? Mm -hmm. I hope so. You know, and I ask for forgiveness. Uh, I'm a very emotional man. For somebody that's a man, I'm very emotional and I shouldn't be. But uh, it happens. That's where my strength, that's where I need strength at. I need strength and I need it from Jesus Christ. And I need to have it in such a way that uh, it's God honoring to Him. The second half of verse 7 says, And yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. You know, for even a good man would dare to die. Would you die for a good man? Somebody that you knew was good, is righteous? You know, does that make you and me any better? You know, or any worse? I would like to think I'd die for my, what now I call my brother in the Lord, and he's also my brother through marriage. Uh, I would die, I believe I would die for him. My wife, I know, I, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt I would die for her. That's what Christ calls us to do, to love our, <coughs> our wives as Christ loved the church, and he gave himself for the church. He died for the church, which is called the Bride of Christ. There's some people that I wouldn't die for. To be honest with you, I'm not like Christ. I didn't die for the ungodly. I haven't died for anybody. It's hard enough to die to self. And we need to die to self. We need to die to selfishness and, and um, hatred and pity and and mercilessness and things like that. What do we, what do we, you know, what do we have our hope in? Our hope is in Christ. He says, and the heading is, Christ is in our place. Aren't you glad Christ, if you're a Christian, aren't you glad Christ is in your place on that cross instead of you someday? Now, uh, granted, here in America, we don't see people dying on crosses. But what about the electric chair? Or what about, uh, uh, you know, injecting or something like that where you, they inject stuff inside of you and you die or whatever? Christ took all that for you and me, didn't he? Amen. I mean, if it was the electric chair 2,000 years ago, he would have been there. But he was on the worst form of, of death, forced death. For a crime he did not commit. It was a kangaroo court. And they killed him. On false pretenses. But as they killed him on false pretenses. God already had. A plan. In place. Knowing that. He was going to die. Jesus Christ his son was going to die on the cross. Because he was only going to be the only righteous person on the entire earth. I mean, we've seen people in the Bible taken away up in heaven like Enoch and, and others and maybe even Moses. And Moses was buried and nobody knew where, but, but they weren't even righteous enough to die for you and for me or for even just the nation of Israel. Moses, the most humble man in Israel at the time, or not even, it wasn't even Israel at the time, really. Because they were in Egypt, and they were going to the Promised Land. He came the closest, as a human being, I believe, to ever dying for, for his people. But he didn't. He wasn't perfect. Though they tried to worship him, he wasn't perfect. You can only worship something that's perfect, 100% sin-free. 
There's nothing in this world that's sin free. Verse 8 says, But God demonstrated his own love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. There's the salvation, the plan of salvation right then and there. That is the gospel of Jesus Christ. We think of the gospels as Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but the gospel is good news that Christ died for you in my in your place, in my place. But see, here's the other thing. God just didn't say he loved us, did he? What's the The Bible says he demonstrated it. You know, it's one thing to say I love you to a friend and not really mean it because he don't demonstrate he or she doesn't demonstrate it. He demonstrated his own love. In order to demonstrate anything, he had to have love. The Bible says in 1 John that God is love. God is the creator of love because he is love. He had to have something to demonstrate. We can demonstrate hatred or anger or malice or gossiping or sinning of any kind. But he demonstrated his love, his own love. He didn't demonstrate my love because my love wasn't good enough. Never will be. Didn't demonstrate my wife's love and how much I know she loves me. <coughs> but he demonstrated his own love. And that's what God calls us to do, is to demonstrate the love of God to others. I don't think it's always because, you know, to, to die for somebody, though people have done that. But to demonstrate means to do something, doesn't it? You know, it's like when I show I'm a vacuum salesman right now, and I, I, I demonstrate the machine, and I show all the, the good attributes that this particular machine has, and and do everything I can to sell this machine. I can't do it just by talking. I've, I've sold machines by just talking, and some people come in, they know what they want, they've done their own research, but there's many others that come in there and they don't do the research, they don't know what they have, they don't know what they want, and so it's up to me to show them how that vacuum works. And God said it's up to me to show the world how much I love them. The Bible says that he first loved us before we ever loved him. He demonstrated his love before we were ever born. Before we ever were ever conceived, he demonstrated his love toward us. And, and on, on top of all of that, for people who don't deserve love at all, I don't deserve God's love. You don't deserve God's love. Nobody deserves God's love. But because he loves us, he shows us his love. He works his love in us. Do you realize how much that God loved this world? People concentrate on all the things that happened in the Old Testament. How God was an angry God and a, and a jealous God and all that. But before all that, before all that, we were sinners. Before he even passed judgment on anybody, we became sinners through Adam and Eve. <coughs> Christ died for us. Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood. Again, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. And all through the Old Testament and part of the New Testament, you see them constantly shedding blood. A constant flow. Yearly. Weekly. Certain holidays. Jewish holidays. Blood was always flowing. Offerings were always being given to show the symbol of what God was going to do, what Jesus Christ did for us. Blood is life. 
Thank God, I believe I have the blood of Jesus flowing in me because I received him into my heart as my Savior and my Lord. My, my natural blood, it's going to come and pour out. And one day, I'll be laying in a coffin somewhere or, or whatever. And that when they embalm you, they take all the blood out of you. To make one, because you're dead, and two, to make sure you're dead. They take it out there because they put chemicals in you, like formaldehyde or whatever they use today. If you still take, if you take to a tradition to a regular funeral and, and everything. He says, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Aren't you glad? I get upset. I don't know if anybody, you know, and uh, to be honest with you, my wrath is, is nothing compared to God's. But we're saved by love through the blood from his wrath. You mean God can be angry and love at the same time? Yeah, because he's God. You mean God can be righteous and holy and still be a jealous God? Yes, he can. I don't know anybody else that can do that. I can't. Can you? Can you be two things at the same time like that? No, it's, it's, it's just too hard. It's too hard for our human minds to comprehend. It's too hard for us to, if we can comprehend anything, to do it. The Bible says, do not just be hearers of the word, but doers of the word in James. And I'm, I'm a poor example of that. At least I feel like I am. And there's others that might think that way of me too, but I'm trying. I'm, I'm, I'm pressing onward towards the mark of the high calling of Christ Jesus. But these last few weeks and this month or so has been very difficult. Some days I, 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 I got the trust of the Lord in my heart and I can go about the whole day, whether it's raining or snowing or whatever the case may be, but then they start piling up on you. Just like our sins piled up on Christ. I wish I was like him and just kept my mouth shut the whole time, except for the seven sayings he said on the cross. He kept his mouth shut. He didn't complain. I'm a complainer. But he died for my complaining. He died to pay for the debt of my complaining. He didn't die for my complaining. He died for me, and He died for you. The Bible says in verse 10, for if, when, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of His Son. Let me read that again because I was yawning. I'm sorry. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of His Son, much more having been reconciled we shall be saved by his life amen that's that's powerful isn't it amen. isn't that powerful we can't save people by our lives i mean we can save them maybe temporarily but god's the one that saves eternally god's the one that saves through his life through his son through his blood through his flesh it was the only perfect flesh. It was the only perfect blood. It was the only perfect life on this entire earth from beginning to end is Jesus Christ. And he's a smack dab in the middle of the history of the world that he does this. <coughs> and not, verse 11 in, in chapter 5, verse 11, and not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. Remember what reconciliation is? Can somebody tell me what reconciliation is? It's being bought back. Being bought back from the devil, amen? Yeah. It's 
being being bought back from death and hell and sin and the grave. <coughs> it's to be made right is another term. To be made right with God. You don't get made right by saying three Hail Marys and taking communion. You don't. You get made right by confessing your sins to God and accepting His free... <coughs> Excuse me. His free gift of salvation on the cross. Lord, make me right today, Lord. Lord, make me right with you right now because I wasn't right just a few minutes ago. Make me right. Buy me back. <coughs> Which he already has and I've already accepted. But you know how it is that sometimes you just... You go to try to go the, the way that God wants you to go, and, and there's this thing on the side of the road. Maybe it's attractive. Maybe it's not attractive. Maybe it's horrible. And you're, you're curious <coughs> about the horribleness. And you know you shouldn't look at it. Excuse me. My wife was just telling me it's this little thing yesterday, yesterday or day before yesterday, out on my driveway was a, a, a dead frog. It was flat as a pancake. And I finally, I finally found it on the, on, the, on the driveway right in front of the kitchen door. Because I, I usually park up there so I don't see it right away. But I saw it the other day. And I looked at it. I didn't know what it was. And I looked at it. It was horrible. It was flat. It was... <coughs> It was dead. It stank. And that's how, God, that's how God sees sinners. We're flat, we're dead, and we stink. <coughs> but you know what? <coughs> we're changing coughs here, aren't we? I see. <coughs> we're flat, we're dead, and we stink, and God still loves us. God still loves us. Like me, man. He still loves us, and I can't, sometimes, I, and right now, I can't fathom how much he loves me. And I, I, I thank God for that. I went in the garage this morning <coughs> to go look for something or, or something, and I smelled another smell. It was a dead bird. How it got in there, guess what? It was flat, it was dead, and it stank the whole garage up. I got it out. It's out there in the garbage. But God, God breathes life into his humans that he made. If we allow him, the only thing we can do, I can't save myself, a dead person can't save themselves. Unless we look up and say, yes, God. That's the only thing we can do. It's the only we can do. We're almost dead. Okay, God. I'm flat on my back. I'm practically dead. I feel dead. Even though I may not be dead. Because you know how that feeling sometimes in your in your in your body and in your emotions raise up. And we start feeling pity for ourselves. And we start feeling uh, uh, you're guilty and ashamed and and condemned and, and things like that and we can only look up to see God and say God save me that's all I can do I'm flat on my back I feel like I'm dead I stink from my sin because the Bible says our righteousness is as filthy rags and if you know what it means by filthy rags it's not purdy and it really, really stinks. And I'm not going to say what it is until, you know, maybe some other time. But if you, if you can think of the most smelliest, stinkiest thing on a rag, or from a rag or whatever, you don't want to be around it. You don't want to touch it. You don't want to smell it. You don't want to look at it. You almost throw up from it. And I'm surprised God hasn't thrown up with us. But you know what? Because... It says in verse 6, 
For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Christ died for the dead spiritually. Christ died for the stinky. Christ died for those flat on their backs. Christ died for those that are in so much trouble right now. It doesn't matter what you've done, sinner. It doesn't matter. God still loves you. And God still wants to revive you. He loves you so much that he shed his own blood. He gave his own life. You tell me any other cult or any other religion or denomination that says otherwise, and they're wrong. They're just plain old wrong. Get saved today if you're lost. If you're flat on your back and things are going wrong in your life, and we often say this, I just don't see how people can make it without Jesus. I really don't. You really can't make it without Jesus. You think you can. You might get across that hurdle. But it wasn't through the Lord. It wasn't through Jesus Christ. And it's, and, and it's usually not going to be very rewarding for very long. Because you're relying on yourself. The Bible says never rely on yourself. The Bible says that the heart is desperately wicked and who can know it? The Bible calls us, you know, all kinds of names as, as non-Christians. But don't get too proud. Don't get too proud because you think you've done it yourself because you haven't. Don't get too condemning of yourself either because Jesus said, I didn't come to condemn you. I came to save you. I came to save the sick. I didn't come to save the well. That's kind of an oxy... Now, i gotta be, I got to be real careful when I say this word. It's kind of, a, kind of an oxymoronic statement when he says this. I came to save the sick, not the well. The well have their doctor. But it's not Dr. Jesus, is it? It's not Dr. Jesus. It's not the great physician. The people who think they're well are like the people in, in Revelations in the church of Laodicea and other churches. They thought they were well. They had it well off. They had money. They had fame. They had power. They had riches. They had everything, but they didn't have Jesus. You can have all that. And you can look good. You can look like you got it all together. I'll be the first one to tell you, I ain't got nothing together sometimes. I barely got it together today. But I got it together with Jesus, not with myself. And then when you hear of other people's problems and other people's situations, and... I'm heartbroken right now. I really am. I'm discouraged right now, but I'm also encouraged. And, I, and my wife encourages me, my brother over here encourages me. You know, I, those are really, as far as physical people on this earth that encourage me, those are really the only two. But I gotta rely on Jesus. What happens if they're gone? I hope not. As I'm getting older, I'm getting weaker, I'm getting frailer. Things happen to you, things like that. And I, I, I got to have Jesus more and more. My time's up. But it's not up for you. As long as you're still alive and you're breathing, the Bible says today is the day of salvation. Come and receive Jesus into your heart as your Savior. And live the life that Christ wants you to live. And we will talk more next week in the ending of Romans chapter 5. Thank you very much. And I want to pray. Father God, thank you so much. I am not in the best of shape right now. But Lord, I know that you will lift me up. Lord, I'm not, I'm not the strong person. Lord, I'm the person that needs you to lift me up more and more. So Lord, I pray for those that are 
weak like me, those that are lost like I used to be, that it would turn to Jesus. And that realize that Christ took our place for all these things, all of our sins, all of our condemnation, all of our judgment, all the things that we should have paid back to God. Christ did it for us. Lord, I pray for somebody to be saved from this message in Jesus' name.